Hey all, this is O12Boku, and I'm basically coming at you a little different way. Don't worry, the original videos will still happen in the way that you believe and think they will, because I know there is a area out you of you out there that um likes our videos and our long-winded full reviews, which I still do enjoy too. And um, you know, regardless of the certain processes and things that we talk about. But um I was with my friend in Florida, um you probably heard of me saying before, Simon e. Thunder Darkstone, and he said I should probably do shorter reviews, see how well they do, see how well it is with just me giving shorter reviews and also giving that as a part of it to see if it would grow the base. Now granted I don't want to get rid of the full line reviews I do and I know there's probably people out there who think they're a bit much, but I do enjoy doing them, and um, you will get this review of, uh, uh, because I don't have the, the DVDs and stuff, I'll basically save those for me do the full reviews with me and uh, Jarek, and Jarek the Jackass, so yeah, I'm not going to continue without him, but I also told him as well I'm going to be doing short reviews on the stuff we do, and then we'll do the full review afterwards as a thing going forward. So I figured I'd give the short reviews time and give you guys shorter reviews if it does happen. I'll try to do it like a comedy skit or anything because I do have my notes and my <coughs> things for the script that you know that we can do and have all those <coughs> types of types of things and granted hopefully I don't get too insensitive or racial or prejudicial but you know that's sort of going to be the thing coming out of these as I try to do it in a sort of funny way and I will present to you basically a, a British person who will come and help do these things you could call me the good old uh Boku of of no of no Lizzo Lizzo Shea of the British end of the Empire. But so I figured what I would do is I would continue without further ado and present to you the Full, well, the short, short review of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, The Fuhrer's Son, episode 32, if I have that correct. Now, let's see if I can do this well as I'm trying to do it as I can. It probably will be a little hard, but I will do my best for you folks. But basically, starting out, the Elrics are looking for the uh, panda. Cat thing. It is a panda, but they're looking for a panda cat thing that belongs to Mei Chang because they're trying to track her down because they want to learn more about elk history. This takes them on adventure to the library, seeing Major Briggs. Oh, no, not Major Briggs. What am I getting at? I'm thinking of Twin Peaks. Oh, yes, Major Alex Lucas Armstrong, and he says, Go see my sister. And they're like, What? And then you have this awesome, nice little crest with the dice. There's a British mustache that sticks out at the end. Very old man and good. And it seems like Major Armstrong's sister is probably one tough cookie lady because she uh, was all in black and mysterious and all tragic. And who doesn't like a bit of a tragic character? So that leads them north into the cold and they are so remedies about snow. And before that though, at the library, they run into the flamboyant, very, very happy, very, very jovial person, Celine Bradley. And Celine Bradley basically fanboys over all the like you wouldn't believe. Like, like, little money daddy, look at this, it's that guy, I want it, I want the Elrics as a toy. They look so cute, you're so awesome, you're so cool. Would you come to my birthday party, please? And so you know, it's very cute, very nice. I know I took the piss out of it there, but who who knows? When you do that, you sort of have to do these things. But that's what Celine Bradley was like. So Celine Bradley takes them to the house. They meet the wife. The wife explains in a very sort of nice, sort of sad way, because if you are as... As you could understand, never really home, but she basically goes into a thing where, okay, I met my husband, and he made me upset. I slapped him across the face, 
boom, we got together, got married, and adopted little Selim here. Then the Fuhrer comes in, crashes the party, makes some threats to the Elrics, and basically gives a little bit of backstory to Backwards Town, as if we needed more on how cool Fuhrer Bradley really is. Sorry, as you know, I like the character. Jack the Jackass likes the character. It's a character we like. Lots of funny things and stuff there, too. But anyway, that continues on. They leave, knowing how we're talking about how the Fuhrer son and wife have no idea how Fuhrer Bradley is a homunculi. It's like, hey there, lady, you ever tell your husband to lift up his one eye patch and see what's under there for a little cup of tea? But no, 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 because you'd probably be ah, splat at the very end there. But also, on a side story, you have. Basically, Soft J. Kenley, Mr. Psychopath himself, trying to go and find, as you can understand, Scar. Scar has escaped with, what's his name, Dr. Marco, and they're on the run, rare things. May Chang gets on a train with another person, we believe it's y y Yoki, and then you have Scar with Dr. Marco running away from authorities, causing caves in and sewer systems, jumping on local trains like an action movie badass, jumping off the trains and going north as Self J. Kimboy was trying to decide where he should go because they thought they was heading to West City. He wasn't heading to West City. He threw him off the trail that they're in and they follow him. Also at that train station, you have Mei Chang run into a very nice Old lady, sounds a little weird, looks a little weird. We, and also, Salty Kimball is sort of recognizing it, but he doesn't go and try to do all that stuff with the things that can't be done. I mean, he's like bollocks to it all. I don't have time to look into it. It's very, very sort of weird things you can understand. But, as it continues on, you see how he gets to the cemetery you have, Go to subtract his wrong hand. What's his name? Well, what is his name here? What is his name? You know, I apologize. If I'm sounding sort of southern, I will try to work on that. I just realized maybe I'm coming out a little too southern for this. Uh, I have not done my British voice in a while, so I realize I need to probably play it a bit more subdued because I'm sort of getting up there. You know, yeah, that's all. Uh, a little bit of company, show myself. So maybe I'll bring it down here. I will work on it, folks. I apologize. But as I can, as you can see, uh, let's see, not Travis William. What's his name? I've forgotten his name. Sorry, he was doing so well, too. Oh, yes. Uh, basically, Colonel Mustang is at the grave of Mace Hughes, who should appear, but it is grooming. In drag, he's dressed up like a woman, an old lady, doing the posturing, and as you can see, grooming, you have Mustang, and you have everyone else, sort of plotting a huge scene, trying to find out what there is, and what they need to do. Once they have that all figured out, it will go and explode and expand in a great sort of thing where they have realized, oh, they're building an immortal army in Central. They asked me if I wanted to join. I said no bollocks to it. I don't want to join. Yes, this is confoundly more British too, I realized. But they said bollocks to it. I'm not going to do it. And then... They basically say we need to work together to plot to bring down Fjord Bradley and discuss the things in Central. So they meet to discuss those things. And basically, that is the uh, short story show in a nutshell. But they are trying to get north. Stuff is getting crazy. They meet the Fjord Sun. They have a contact with the Fjord Bra uh, Mustang and Grumman are plotting, everyone's plotting, Salt Jake Kimberly looking for Scar, trying to close that door before it can get any more worse, and we go forward. And basically, I can tell you, I know we usually go over a full actor amount, but I will say what my favorite character is, I will go and possibly a little more depth, so if you get it, don't worry about it, I will mention it again to you. But basically, we have... Celine Bradley, Brittany Kopaski, and Yuko... What the hell did I write here? Oh, Sonny. Yuko Sonny, who plays... Who plays Celine Bradley. Both great voices. Brittany Kopaski blows it out of the park. It looks wonderful. And it's absolutely, absolutely great. 
smashing great detail in everything that there is. So that is the episode, a great episode, moving things forward, adding a lot to it, a lot of power, a lot of gait. Sorry for the Southern Cockney accent, because I should sound more like this, but not more like this, because this all sounds weird, but I guess, I guess I can say that. Comes and that, but yeah, this all sounds, because basically when I do my Southern voice, I sort of sound like this more right now, so, well, man. So, I like this. A bit more subdued. Sorry, as you can see, I'm playing with things live, but hey, that is what it is. But this is the short, short review. Tell me what you think down below. Do you like the short reviews? Do you want me to do it? Do you like us doing the long reviews? Because, again, I would love to keep doing it. And I will still do the long reviews, because I know there's people who love the long reviews. They love me and Jarek doing this together. And I would still love to keep doing it with him and, you know, enjoy it with him. And I will, and I will love doing this review more in depth because I think we have more to contribute but that is a short short review tell me what you think down below and leave a comment and as then this is Erwin Tubogu as a crazy cockney southern and other type of British person coming at you then and we'll see you again another time all right as they say deuces